Discussion with Scott continues. Rick Barcode, flarebar.com. I'm of the opinion that this should progress into a sport. Okay. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, this yeah. should progress into a sport because uh, a lot of bartenders who have bruised knuckles for years on it sure. feel that uh, we should get rewarded for that. And, um, you know, uh, through competing and through sponsorship deals, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think my original question was. <coughs> Do you think that because, all right, just just pretend that you think this is a sport for a second, and that, um, <laughs> <laughs> wow, I'm not gonna. Okay, I'm not gonna no, go but, but do you think that the fact that we deal with alcohol is going to be a stumbling block in getting this global recognition and getting it on TV and getting it in the media and getting it out to the public? Because we deal with alcohol, do you think that we're going to come across the same stumbling blocks that tobacco does, that uh, boxing does, that? Uh, if you're asking if I were to compare it to a sport like extreme skateboarding, like extreme rollerblading, those kind of things, yes, I think it absolutely would be a stumbling block. Absolutely. Because those are the kind of things they've got a worldwide, all ages audience, and they want everybody to do. We have a business that, it's a business, <laughs> we have a business that you have to be 18 or 19 or 21, depending on on the country to be able to participate. And I think that if you want to be able to have the regular extreme games with bartending, I think that's going to be a very big stumbling block. Because middle America mainly, which is a lot of power with, with, the, with the media, yeah. right? It, it's just not, I don't think they're going to accept that. Do, do, do you think as an industry we have the power to overcome that stumbling block, or do you think it's not going to happen within our lifetime? I think we should ask the question, do we want to overcome that? I, I, as a competitive player bartender, I understand. of course we want to overcome that. Okay. As a parent, I don't have any kids, so I'm okay. not bothered. Fair enough. <laughs> That's a nice question though. And I think that let's look at the numbers of, uh, of, of how many competitive bartenders there are. Now, I get full respect for all the people who are putting all the effort into it and they're making the shows, but I think that if you look at the, bar, the amount of bartenders out there who are doing this who are not competing, the people who are, are not competing vastly and, and have skill vastly outnumber the people who are competing. And I think that if, I think that if we continue to try and, and present a professional all around full package to the masses, I think it's going to be accepted more and more and more. And I think maybe you'll get more opportunities that way. I think if we continue to, uh, to push it into a sport where you forget the business, Right? Because I don't, I don't think they, I don't think they match. I think if you continue to do that, we're going to continue to have people. Okay, put this back up for one second. A sport, in my mind, is getting into more of the really amazing, wicked, you know, double, triple, four balls, all the stuff that really is getting away from what you would do in a real bar. Mm -hmm. Right? As amazing as that is, amazing. That, and and again, I want to be very clear in the fact that I, I'm amazed at how the new generation is coming in and is bringing that exhibition, that stuff that we go, wow, you'd never do that in a bar, and they're starting to do that. I love that. I love that. And that's the way it should be. Having said that, the average person who sees this, if we want to, if we want to get to where you want to be, you've got to convince the average public that, you know what, it's a viable entertainment and it's a viable business, but it's never going to change. It's always a business. Do you think it'll happen in a lifetime? That it'll become a sport, a natural thing on, on ESPN? To the same degree that skateboarding I, I don't think I don't think that'll ever happen to that extent. I do. You don't? I think you? It will. Maybe. Um, I think it's I, I think it's yeah. probably easier to do in Europe. Probably. If you look, I mean, let's look at the let's look at the global. This, I mean, the states is great, but man, it's a big world, right? Yes. The state. I mean, look at other places that I, are much I more. Agree, I but at the, the same experts. time, America leads the world. I mean, there's, sure. no, there's no saying America catches the cold in the world. I'm um, sorry, America sneezes and the rest of the world catches the cold. Maybe, but I'll give you an example. Um, Germany. There's a, there's a, a TV show <coughs> in Germany. I don't know if everybody's heard of this, but it's actually, it's a, it's a bartender challenge kind of thing. Yeah. It's a half an hour show. And, uh, God bless you. And you know what? <laughs> Germany, it's a little bit of a lighter way of looking at drinking. Do you know the name of that show? I don't. I, I have it somewhere in somebody's email meeting. Uh, I never have it on my mind. But that exists. And the fact is that Europe is generally, has a much much lighter and more accepting view of a liberal view of, of drinking, of sex, of you know, all the good stuff. Oh yeah, right? So I think that 
I think that if we can stop thinking locally and think globally, I think that you're already closer than you might think. Never hope more than you work. Rita Mae Brown.